everyone, today I'm going to go over the final raid of Wrath of the Lich King Classic, Ruby Sanctum. This one is similar to Obsidian Sanctum in that there are three mini bosses plus a main boss, Halion. However, unlike Obsidian Sanctum, there's no scaled difficulty based on leaving mini bosses alive. You must kill all three mini bosses for Halion to spawn. To start off, you'll need to clear some trash. Any trash you leave behind will not pull with Halion, so skip what you can. Char scale assaulters are the Draconids with the Glaives, aka Star Wars kids. These will shockwave and cleave, so just make sure to face them away. Char scale invokers are the four legged caster dragons and will cast a blast wave and scorch, both of which can be interrupted. It isn't a big deal if the scorch isn't interrupted, but the blast wave will knock back all the melee and make the pack take longer to kill, so try to get that one. You'll encounter some packs that have a char scale commander. This mob will cast a shout on the rest of the pack that gives a stacking 25% damage buff for each nearby mob. The easiest way to deal with this is just to hibernate the char scale commander on the pole and keep him hibernated while the rest of the pack is AoE'd down away from him. He also has a mortal strike, but this doesn't really matter once the rest of the pack is dead and you kill him when he gets out of the hibernate. You will suffer for this intrusion. Once you've cleared some of the trash, you can pull Savina Ragefire, one of the three mini bosses. She has a flame breath, so just face her away from the raid, and she'll occasionally enrage, so have a hunter trank shot that. Periodically, she'll fly into the air, five people in the raid will get marked with flame beacon, and after a short time will get hit with conflagrate. It's important that they're away from everyone else when this hits them. You can either have the whole raid stacked up and the five people move out away from each other, or just have the entire raid spread out. Ah, the entertainment has arrived. The next boss you'll fight is Beltharis the Warborn. He'll cleave and cast Blade Tempest, which does heavy frontal damage for 4 seconds, so just make sure he's faced away from the raid. He also casts a AoE knockback occasionally. It's best to tank him with your back to something so he doesn't move around and frontal anyone. Enervating Brand is a debuff he'll put on a random player that will cause them to reduce nearby players' damage by 2% per stack and give Beltharis a damage boost equal to the reduced damage. Players with this debuff just need to move more than 12 yards away from others. Occasionally he'll summon a clone that has all the same abilities, so just keep threat on the clones and focus down the main Beltharis. It can be helpful to mark him at the start so everyone knows which one is the real one. If you're solo tanking this, you can use your wall when you have Beltharis and two clones on you and they're using Blade Tempest. Alex Straza has chosen capable allies. A pity that I must end you. Now that you've killed the first two mini bosses, you'll be able to access the final mini boss, General Zerithrian. On the way to him, you'll fight two Charscale elites. These will occasionally cast an instant attack that stuns for two seconds. It can be a little bursty, but they're easily solo tankable. They can also be disarmed. General Zerithrian will put a stacking armor debuff on the tank that can be bopped or bubbled off, so you shouldn't need to tank swap for this. Three stacks seemed like a good number to clear it at. He'll fear the whole raid periodically, but it's short and players will stay stationary while feared. Onyx Flamecallers spawn throughout the fight and should be gripped in, interrupted, and cleaved or focused down. They'll cast an interruptible direct damage fire attack and an uninterruptible blast wave. Your world teeters on the brink of annihilation. You will all bear witness to the coming of a new age of destruction. Now you can pull Halion. Remember, any leftover trash around the room will not pull when you engage Halion, so you don't need to kill it all. You'll want two tanks for normal 10 and 25 man, and typically three tanks for heroic 25 man, but it's possible with two. Halion has the normal dragon abilities, a breath, cleave and tail swipe, so position accordingly. He also has a hidden buff called Twilight Precision, which is the same thing as Sunwell Radiance if you played TBC. It'll lower the tank's total avoidance by 25%. I recommend you wear a tankier set for your first time, and then you can adjust from there as you see fit. The first phase of this fight is the fire phase and will last until 75%. During this phase, Halion will use Fiery Combustion and Meteor Strike. Fiery Combustion is a dot that, when cleansed, will spawn a ground effect and knock back and deal damage to anyone nearby. Both Magic and Curse Removal can cleanse it. The target will take damage and gain a stack of Mark of Combustion every 2 seconds. 
The size of the ground effect that is dropped after fiery combustion is cleansed will be proportional to the number of stacks of mark of combustion the player had. This means it's important that players who get fiery combustion get to a wall and get cleansed quickly so the ground effect is as small as possible while also being out of the way. Meteor Strike is Halion's other main ability this phase and will one-shot anyone directly where it lands. It will also shoot out fire in four random directions that will linger on the ground. On Heroic 25 men, adds will spawn out of the fire too. The big ad is the Living Inferno and has Blazing Aura, which is a 15 yard range aura that gives Awaken Flames a stacking plus 30% damage and health buff to Living Embers, the small adds. It also deals about 7500 resistible fire damage to players. Every 2 seconds this aura will pulse, dealing damage to players and stacking the buff on the embers. The typical way this is dealt with is the Halion tank will taunt the living inferno, and the living embers will be picked up by another tank and AoE down on the side of Halion so that the embers don't get the stacking buff from the inferno. With exceptional AoE DPS, you can also just stack the inferno and embers and AoE them down together. On the PTR, the embers did not seem to properly be getting the damage increase from Awakened Flames, so their damage should be a lot higher than what you see me taking here. Both the Infernos and Embers deal resistible and blockable fire damage melees. At 75%, a portal will open up. Click on it to get transported to the Shadow Phase and pick up Halion ASAP. In the Shadow Phase, Halion will still do a Cleave, Breath, and Tail Swipe. The Fire Dot will be replaced by a Shadow Dot called Soul Consumption, which works pretty much the same way, but when cleansed, will suck in anyone nearby instead of knocking them back. People with the Dot need to get to a wall and get cleansed ASAP to keep the ground effect small. The ground effect will also slow, so whoever gets Soul Consumption should also get a Hand of Freedom so they don't get stuck in the ground effect after they get cleansed. In this phase, Halion will also cast Twilight Cutter. You'll see four dark orbs rotating around the room on Heroic and two on Normal. When Twilight Cutter is cast, a line will connect the orbs opposite one another, creating four quadrants on Heroic and two halves on Normal. Each of these lines is essentially a C'Thun Beam that will kill you if you get hit by it. Immunities will not work on this. A couple seconds before Twilight Cutter is cast, make note of the orb positions and start to rotate the boss so that you stay between two orbs and won't get hit by the lines when they spawn. Once you see the lines disappear, just stop moving until the next Twilight Cutter cast. Halion has a pretty big hitbox and being further away will give you more leeway on the cutters, so try not to be too far in. The DBM timer for this ability can be a little confusing. There will be an initial countdown for Twilight Cutter, and then another 5 second timer will begin after the first timer reaches 0. When the second timer reaches 0 is when the Twilight Cutter lines actually activate. At 50%, Phase 3 will begin. Alion will simultaneously be active in both the Fire and Shadow Realm during this phase. You can use the portals around the room to go between the Fire and Shadow Realms. In this phase, he will gain the Corporeality debuff, which means if he's taking too much damage in one realm, he'll start to deal and take ramping reduced damage in that realm, and deal and take ramping increased damage in the other realm. The people in the fire phase will also have to kill adds, so you'll typically have more DPS out there, since they won't be fully focused on single target damage like the people in the shadow phase. 15 to 17 people in fire phase and 8 to 10 in shadow phase is the general split. The DPS in the Shadow Phase should be melee since they can deal full damage while moving for Twilight Cutter. The ground effects caused by Fiery Combustion and Soul Consumption will also be present in both realms simultaneously in this phase. So you'll see Shadow and Fire ground effects in both realms. If you're using a third tank, they'll be picking up Living Embers during this phase. Just continue doing the same mechanics you've already been doing until Halion dies. Alright, that should be everything you need to know for Ruby Sanctum. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.